Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to introduce context-aware local differential privacy. I'm Zitong Sun from Cornell, and this is a joint work with Jaidev, Kaylee, Peter, and Daniel. Here is an outline. We will start with the motivation of the work, then we will provide the definition and interpretation. After that, we provide optimal schemes for binary alphabet. For general k array alphabet, we study the task of distribution learning and provide type trade-offs for two best special cases. We conclude the talk with some experimental results. Suppose we want to study the percentage of people who have done drugs in the last month in a certain population. One popular way is to conduct a survey on a randomly sampled subset of the population and ask them the following question. Have you done drugs in the last month? The, question to the, the answer to the question can be sensitive to people, so we may, we may need to protect the privacy of them. And now it is well known that simple anonymization will not give you a strict privacy guarantee. One of the most well-known privacy protection scheme is called the randomized response, proposed by Warner in 1965. The scheme is the following. When a new user comes, he or she will throw a dice. If the outcome is one to four, he or she will give the true answer. And if the outcome is five or six, a fake answer will be given. In other words, if you have done drugs, you will output yes with probably two thirds. And if you have not done drugs, it is still possible that you will output yes, but with a lower probability, one third. This scheme satisfies one of the most widely known, widely used notion of privacy called local differential privacy. It is required that for any distinct pair of inputs, x and x prime, and any output y, uh, the ratio between the output probability of outputting y given x and the output probability of y given x prime is bounded by e to the epsilon. The smaller e epsilon is, the closer the distribu output distributions are and the more privacy you have. It can be verified that the randomized response scheme we mentioned satisfies epsilon equals to ln 2 local differential privacy. The notion pro uh, provides strict privacy guarantee even when the data collector is malicious. It is also robust to auxiliary information and post-processing. However, due to the required randomization of the data, it often leads to a degradation in performance for many statistical tasks, including stochastic convex optimization, distribution estimation, and heavy heater detection. How can we relax the requirement without reducing the nice privacy guarantee we have? Let's consider the following inferential interpretation of LDP. Given any auxiliary information O, if a user wants to guess whether the input is X or not based on the output Y of an LDP channel W, his success probability should not increase by a factor uh, more than e to the epsilon compared to someone who only has access to O. For LDP, this should hold for any element in the alphabet. However, in some applications, not all the elements are equally sensitive. Let's go back to the binary example we had. If, if someone has done drugs, this is sensitive information and we shouldn't release it. However, if someone does not do drugs, it is also reasonable to assume that it is okay if this information is released since it's not sensitive. Let's focus on the scheme of randomized response uh, and see how it protects users' information. Assuming the worst case, the response of a user is released directly. Even if we know his or her answer is yes, uh, the user can still deny it because even if his or her answer is no, he or she will still output yes with a non-trivial probability. Similarly, if you use, uh, a user can still deny a no answer by saying he or she has actually done drugs. But it is reasonable to assume nobody will do that. So there is no need to randomize sensitive answers to protect non-sensitive answers. This scheme is called Manga's improved response. If a user has not done drugs, he or she will do the same for randomized response. But if the answer is yes, he can directly output yes deterministically. It is believable intuitively this should lead to better utility since we are randomizing less answers and this should protect reasonable privacy. But the question is, what privacy notion does this satisfy? In this paper, we propose context-aware local differential privacy, 
Given the matrix E, which defines the privacy levels between each pair of input elements, the notion requires the following. For any Y in the output alphabet, the ratio between the probability of outputting Y given X and the probability of outputting Y given X prime is bounded by E to the epsilon X and X prime. If epsilon X and X prime equals to epsilon for all X and X primes, this recovers the classic notion of LDP. And we can see that the privacy mentioned Mangus improved response satisfies ELDP with the following privacy matrix. This framework offers more flexibility for privacy experts to use their domain knowledge to design privacy notions based on specific applications. Now the question is, how should we interpret these parameters? The E is asymmetric. More specifically, epsilon x x prime is not equal to epsilon x prime x. Let's consider a test where the input is known to be the set of x x prime. Given the output of the privacy preserving channel satisfying ELDP, the goal is to guess whether the input is x or x prime. We measure the uh, performance of the test by the following two failure probabilities. The false alarm rate is the probability of outputting x given the true input is x prime, and the misdetection rate is the probability of outputting x prime when the true input is x. The following theorems gives an operational interpretation of the context of our LDP, which says that the two failure rates are constrained by, a, by the following two boundaries and cannot be simultaneously small. This figure shows the achievable region for standard LDP, and we can see that it is symmetric uh, along the line of PFA equals to PMD. For context-aware LDP, on the other hand, the region can be asymmetric. In this case, epsilon x x prime is smaller than epsilon x prime x. We can see we are enforcing the false alarm rate to be higher, which means that we are protecting more of the privacy of element x. For symmetric E matrices, our framework induces a similar structure as metric-based LDP. Suppose X is a metric space embedded with a metric D, then the privacy level between X and X prime is defined as the distance between two elements. The privacy notion requires that it is harder to distinguish between elements that are closer to each other in the embedded metric. The notion also satisfies several pr properties we want, including post-processing, robust oxidant information, and adaptive composition. Now the question is, given an E matrix designed by domain experts, what is the scheme that maximizes the utility? For binary alphabet, we give explicit form for optimal schemes for all utility functions with a reasonable assumption. For general K array alphabet, the optimal scheme is unclear in general. Here, we consider two special cases, high-low LDP and block-structured LDP. We characterize tight trade-off for the task of di the, uh, distribution estimation under these two notions. For binary alphabet, the following scheme W star maximizes all utility functions that satisfy data processing inequality under ELDP constraints. Data processing inequality is a very natural assumption on any reasonable utility functions. These utility functions include LP norms, KL divergences, mutual information, and etc. Actually, to the best of our knowledge, we are not aware of any utility function that, that, that doesn't obey data processing inequality which are commonly used in machine learning. The scheme recovers randomized response when epsilon 1, 2 equals to epsilon 2, 1, and it recovers Mangas improved response when epsilon 2, 1 is infinity, which demonstrates the op optimality of the two schemes. For k array alphabet, motivated by web applications, where there are many URLs, but only a small subset of them is sensitive. We propose high-low LDP, where there is a small subset of sensitive uh, domain elements of size S, uh, a scheme is said to be A epsilon high-low LDP when for all our subsets of S of the output alphabet, the ratio between the probability of outputting S given a sensitive element and the probability of outputting S given any other element is bounded by E to the epsilon. The definition corresponds to the following E matrix and only protects the identity of sensitive elements. Another uh, definition is motivated by geolocation applications, where the domain can be divided according to different uh, granularities. 
In this case, it is okay to learn which city the user is in, which can be obtained easily from auxiliary information, but the specific street address can be a more sensitive information which we need to protect. Given a partition pi of the input domain, we only require the output probability ratio to be bounded when x and x prime are in the same partition. This notion doesn't protect against releasing which partition the user is in, but it is hard to infer which specific elements a user has in a certain population. Sorry. To study how these privacy notions will lead to utility improvement, we consider the task of distribution estimation. There is a known alphabet of size k and a known of a distribution p over the alphabet. N users each observe an independent element from the distribution and passes their sample through a channel W. The goal is to come up with an estimator which estimates the distribution based on the output of the channels. Moreover, the estimator has to est uh, estimate the distribution up to accuracy alpha and succeed with probability at least two thirds. The sample complexity of the problem is defined as the smallest number of samples for which such an estimator exists. Without any constraints, the sample complexity is known to be k over alpha squared, which is linear in the alphabet size. With classic LDP constraints, the sample complexity is known to be k over alpha squared, epsilon squared, which is quadratic in the, sample, uh, in the alphabet size. When the channels are hello LDP with a sensitive set of size s, we establish the sample complexity as the following. You can see the sample complexity is only quadratic in the sensitive uh, set sets. We can see when s is smaller than square root k, the sample complexity is still linear in k. Uh, for block structured LDP, with each block size being ki, we establish the following sample complexity at for more, uh, more specifically, when all the blocks have the same size of k over m, the sample complexity is reduced by a factor of m compared to the classic LDP case. The results are summarized in this table. We also conduct experiments on both simulated data and real-world data to demonstrate our findings. We focus on the case of block-structured LDP with equal partitions. We compare our algorithms with one of the state-of-the-art algorithms for epsilon LDP estimation. We can see for different simulated distributions, we get less error under block structured LDP and the error gets lower when M increases. For real data, we consider Gwala user checking data set, which consists of more than 3 million checking records. We did some pre-processing to get a data set with input alphabet size more than 40,000. The following is a heat map of the pre-processed data set. By dividing the elements into blocks, both horizontally and vertically, we can see we get a decent estimation accuracy for block-structured LDP case, where for the LDP case, we barely learn anything. This demonstrates the, practical, uh, the practicability of our framework and the realistic scale datasets. Thank you for listening. Please read our full paper if you're interested.